Meet Digit, the humanoid robot whose creators want it delivering packages to your doorstep. Today we're going to take a look at how Digit works, what it can do, and how it compares to some of the other humanoid robots currently in development. Let's get into it. Digit's been developed by a company called Agility Robotics. The latest video of Digit shows that the robot is now available for work in warehouse environments. We talked with the company's chief technology officer, Jonathan Hurst, to learn more. It's not just an interesting tech demo. We've shown a lot of that kind of thing in the past. We've talked about the vision of having robots operating in human environments, uh, working in our spaces. We've shown the vision of digit delivering things to your door. And I guess what's different now is that this is the robots being deployed in the next two years. The first is this pulling totes or boxes in kind of the back room of the warehouse, in the big logistics centers that are doing all this kind of sorting and picking and moving and placing. The next thing is like trailer unload. Once you've really got it down that as we build up over time, the intelligence, the capability of the robot to be certified safe around people as it gets uh, closer and closer kinds of interactions. Autonomous delivery of things to your doorstep is straightforward. Just having the awareness and having the practice and having the reliability after deploying thousands and thousands of robots in back rooms where it's a little bit more structured is sort of the path outside, you know, the path to those next tasks. Digit is prepared to traverse things like stairs, grass, and slopes, which it might find in its future delivery journeys thanks to the work that Agility Robotics put in on its previous robot, Cassie. Cassie is not useful for anything other than understanding and researching like a locomotion research. So the plan was always to do what we're doing right now. To help it navigate different work environments, Digit includes two kinds of computer vision. So we have a set of uh, depth sensors that kind of give us an idea of all of the surface planes around us in the immediate vicinity, like right in front of us and down. And that allows the robot to know where it's going to be able to step or where it's going to be able to place its manipulators to pick something up or move something. There's also a LiDAR sensor on board, which is a much longer range and kind of tells it where the walls are, where people might be. Uh, allows it to localize itself within that map and know where it is. As we've seen on What the Future, there have been a handful of other humanoid robots making headlines, from the acrobatic Atlas made by Boston Dynamics to the recently announced but not yet built Tesla bot. I asked Jonathan what separates Digit from the competition, and here's what he had to say about that. Well, the Tesla bot isn't one, right? <laughs> it will be someday, and I at least the vision that's been announced on that is the same thing we've been talking about for years and years and what we've been building towards with our digital robot. Atlas, the goal is to be a very, very powerful, very strong um, uh, push the limits of performance. And you know what we're doing at Agility Robotics with Digit is robots that work in human spaces, robots that work with people. And so it's a, it's a different set of goals. There's some pretty big technology differences as well. Digit is very efficient. It's able to last quite a long time on a battery. Actually, most of the power draw is from computing, not locomotion. A spokesperson from Boston Dynamics confirmed that Atlas's primary function is as a research platform for developing new hardware and software, that more power is drawn from actuation than from computing, and that the battery life on Atlas is about 30 minutes depending on what activities are being performed. Tesla did not respond to a request for comment. Now back to Digit. So how much does one of these things cost? The complexity of the robot, if you look at what it is and how it's manufactured, is kind of on the order of like an electric motorcycle plus a laptop. So look at, you know, about what it costs at volume for a pretty nice electric motorcycle and a laptop, and that's kind of the price point that Digit's going to get to at that kind of volume. While Digit robots continue their march into the workplace, Jonathan left me with his vision for how these robots might someday integrate into our lives. I expect to have a robot that's going to be able to help me around the house. With semi-general things. You know, I guess I have a robot that helps me around the house now. I have a Roomba and I have um, Moppy. I don't remember what brand it is, but it's our mopping robot. You know? Honestly, I have a dishwasher. That's clearly a robot, but they're pretty specific. The, the value of Digit is its generality. You know, at some point, it's going to be able to help you carry the groceries in. It's going to, I, actually, I think that'll, yeah, that'll be entirely automated. You're going to, food's going to be part of the logistics chain coming into your home. Even something like a telepresence machine, you know, right now, I talk with my parents or I talk with my, my sister who are far away, but we will have the telepresence robots. So you kind of log into somebody's robot and then you can hang out with them. You know, I can be 
outside in the garden working on things and my robot will be out there with me and that'll be my daughter or that'll be a family member or a friend and you know we're we're a thousand miles away but uh but interacting well what do you think of digit would you want to work alongside humanoid robots at your place of work let us know down in the comments as always thanks so much for watching i'm your host jesse Orl. see you next time what the fam